I can only work, we can only work if you listen to me, okay? I need your cooperation again and again. Without that, we cannot work. So, we were talking, starting with the first chapter about the lodging industry, as we call it. Lodging industry, okay? I mentioned that already uh, last week, that for the guests, for the clients, the front office is very often the hotel, equals to the hotel. Why? Let me ask you immediately. Why, for most of the clients, the front, front office is the hotel? I'm encouraging again and again everybody to contribute, okay, to ask questions and try to answer. Thank you. The first impression, which is extremely important for all of us, for all of us during the life, the first impression what we got. And the first impression a client, a customer, a guest is getting at the front office. The person outside the door, we call it the doorman or the valley attendant or parking attendant. Or may I have please, may I have please silence in the room. Thank you. So, this, those people are part of the front office. Then they approach the desk to check in, the check in area. Some hotels call it reception, where they receive the clients. Check in area. That's again front office people. They are standing in front of you, behind the desk. We call them front desk agents. In the past, the front desk has been divided, or some hotel still dividing the front office for different parts, like cashier, where you can only do the checkout, reception, where you can only do the check in, concierge, who knows the French word, except Mademoiselle Vidal. Hungarian students, concierge, how would you translate this into Hungarian? Otas, wrong, yes, somebody else? Thank you very much, Hartmester, Hartmester, ladies and gentlemen, remember that, remember that. The porter, the porter is somebody who is handling the luggage, that's the porter, that's the porter. So you will see there are several misunderstandings because the original Hungarian translation comes from the German. You know, how do we call the person who is handling the luggage? Bellboy, we call it here because learning uh, the English style, bellboy, but in the States, in the United States they call it a porter. A porter. Okay? So, for them, probably the word bellboy, it is not frequently used, not common. Okay. But we will learn the international language of the industry. How do, we, how do they call a bellboy in Hungary? Hungarian. Londiner. Do you know the meaning of the word? Londiner. Who can properly translate that from German to Hungarian? Long dinner. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, word by word the translation sounds sounds bear solgo. Long dinner. Bear solgo. Is it, it it's interesting. You know, Tina Turner would say dancer for money. Okay? <coughs> so the guest is approaching then the front desk. Hopefully people smiling behind the front desk as well and trying to check in. May I have please everybody's attention? Thank you very much. Trying to check in. What obstacles, if any, there could be a check in and why? Hard to get. 
Pardon me? For the guest, obviously. We are always approaching from the guest point of view. What can make a check-in, put it that way, easier, pleasant, and uncomfortable, unpleasant? There is Alex. Yeah? <laughs> the bellboy as well, but we are... The bellboy is finished. He's or her his duty usually. We are at the check-in. What is? Speak up. We are at the check-in, Alexandra. Please pay attention to each other as well. Yes? Thank you very much. Excellent. So when the necessary, and that's her point as well, when the necessary preparation from the side of the hotel has been made to have the room available, requested by the client upon arrival. So the whole hassle, what we are learning and going through in real terms in the hotel as well, is only to have the room available requested by the client upon arrival. The type, the price, everything according to the agreement. This is a gentleman, one of the most important things we do during the reservation process, which is as well part of, of the front office operation, still first impression, because even though the client is facing possible problems at check-in, that all caused usually by the reservation part of the front office as well. Because they were not doing a proper job, a proper work in the so-called pre-arrival period we were talking about last week. Okay. So when not properly finalized, the arrival date, the departure date, number of packs, number of people, we use the word number of packs, Number of people in the party, okay? How many people are going to share maybe the room? Other special dishes. We need a joining room. We need rooms far from each other because I'm traveling with my mother-in-law. Another floor or something like that, if it's possible. So all the dishes are not fulfilled during the reservation process. Then what we have as a final result, result there we have an unsatisfied customer. Okay. So that's the front office. Then who is going to show up the guest to the room in a good hotel? We are not letting the client go. Go ahead. That's your key and finita la storia. But we are doing more than that. Who is going to show up the client to the room? Who is doing that? Let's suppose in a good international hotel. Nobody has a personal experience. I don't want to always ask Alexandra. Still the bellboy. Well trained bell staff. Bell staff contains the bell captain who is the head of the bell staff. In a well-organized hotel, the bell captain is always in position somewhere in the lobby watching the area, watching the entrance, there, can I, why could I help? Watching the elevators, if we have, you know, who is coming up, who is uh, uh, going, uh, uh, coming down, going up, okay? Because that's the only way to help. If we talk to each other, colleagues, then we won't see the guest area. We are there as service providers to pay attention to the customers, how they are moving, what is happening, security concerns as well, not only hospitality concerns. So the bellboy, a well-trained bellboy, part of the bell staff, is showing up the client to the room. What is he, or usually a man, because that's something luggage handling, you know, although I am from 
form equal rights, but I don't think, you know, that ladies should do the luggage handling. Okay, so a man is showing up, the guest to the room. What is he supposed to do during the way up to the room and in the room? Now, Alex? Yes, that's a regular bellboy. That's a regular, but in a good international hotel, Alexandra, think about that. That's a point you have the time to sell. You have the time, okay, thank you very much. So, if that's the point to sell. I'm taking the guest in, up into the room, even if he or she is in a hurry. I have the time on the way and in the room, and it's my duty as well to sell other facilities in the hotel, to promote the possibilities what we have. Do you know that we have a fantastic swimming pool, a fitness area, best in the town, you know? We have a beautiful Italian restaurant, we have a nice French restaurant on the first floor. Very well known, but I must tell you that you have to reserve a table because that's rather fully booked. In a way, telling the guest, informing the guest that people are looking for the possibility to eat in the French, in the Italian, and in the local restaurant as well. So selling the place. I remind you immediately at the beginning that some people wrongly believe that sales, marketing, and public relations is only the work of the sales, marketing, and public relations people. Ladies and gentlemen, no. That's a joint team effort. Everybody should contribute. In the hotel, in a way, everybody is a salesperson. If I am nice as a valley attendant to the client, then I am a salesperson promoting the hotel as well. If I am nice to the client, as a bellboy, I am promoting selling the hotel. Creating the impression, make the guests return, like we do in the Hero Square. Make the Indians return to our country. So, that a good bellboy is doing that, in the room. Imagine that you are a client there as a uh, first time in that place, first time in that hotel. You don't know how it works, the other end of the world, you know. Up to a point you are even frightened because everything is unusual. You don't understand usually the local language, okay? So that's all. We have to help the client, the guest, to overcome these difficulties. You know, and that's the duty of the bellboy as well. You know, I just wanted to point it out. So selling the facilities, possibilities in the hotel, promoting the other, other uh, possibilities in the hotel, and helping the guests to overcome these difficulties. I have been walking around as a duty manager in the hotel Sofitel, just recently, six months ago. And I saw a couple with a key card. Have you seen a key card? Something similar than this. A key card, we will talk about later on, which is an electric or electro rather electronic lock system. No, you'll see it, thank you. Sir. A key card, Oh, we have one. We have one from the Intercontinental. That's even better. Thank you. So, uh, couple standing at the front of the door, trying to enter. You know, poor people, probably elderly, certainly without much experience. They were trying in many ways. You, know? yeah. you remember probably films how some clever people are trying to open a door, you know. So they were trying everything, you know. And I went there immediately, may I help you? I am the duty manager, my name, introducing obviously myself, because I have been wearing probably the same suit, you know. Yes, we couldn't open the door, you know. There are two things you can do at this point. First, that is it. You can do that. You, know, you can open the door in a way explaining in the meantime, yes, unfortunately, that's a very tricky system. We have several problems with it. 
and open the door then, what is the difference between the two? Attitude, certainly, yes. What is the difference between the two? And some other answer I'm looking for. Yes, that's exactly it. The first one is sending a message to the client, you are a stupid idiot. You don't even know at the front of his wife, don't forget that, shameful, you know, that's the message of the first one. Where you have me. Yes, certainly, I opened the door. But in the meantime, you created an atmosphere that they would never return at least the person who is ashamed in the situation. Okay? So remember that always. You have to help. But in a way, you know, helping the others overcome their difficulties. We all have one. Imagine how often it's happening to you in Hungarian shops that people are helping you overcoming your difficulties. Okay, so the bell boy, we were at the point, is going up to the room, the guest, not knowing how the different systems are working. You know, we receive, receive, and these are all examples from real life. Daily, two dozens of call from the room, that electricity is not working in my room. Can you send up somebody? We are here in total darkness. Imagine the situation, in a strange place, you know, are they still eating children or not? You never know. You know, you are in a strange place, other part of the world, and the electricity, you cannot switch off. Whatever you are doing is not working. What is the reason? You tell me. Because then means that you can uh, put your in the shoes of these customers. If you can imagine the situation, what could be wrong? Okay, wait a second, because obviously you know the answer. What do you think? In a five-star hotel, people have difficulties not to, uh, to open the door, to switch on the light. Isn't it a basic need to have light in the room for two, three hundred euro? Pardon me? No proper preparation. That can be as well. But in this case, it's more tricky than that. Yes? Aha! Here we have the point. You see, first time travelers, it could happen to you as well. That's what I wanted to show. Thank you very much. It could happen with all of us. Because we are not aware of the local situation, how it works. There is a tricky method. May I, may I have, please, everybody's attention? Thank you very much. There is an electric saving device, put it that way. We will, we will deal with that later on in details during the semester. Very simple. How do we save energy at this point? Make sure that when a guest is going out into the town, leaving the room empty, you know, that we don't have all the lights and equipment switched on working. Okay? This is one real way to save energy. At home you are doing that. When you are leaving, you switch off the lights. If there is no need. Okay? So we are all doing that. That too. Get the result that the client is doing that. Some people are careless, as you know that very well. They don't care. I pay the room, I leave on everything. You know? So there is an electric sa electricity saving device. You have to put your key card after you open the door, obviously, inside the room, in a certain hole, you know, which the electricity in the room is working only if you are in the room, although the key is in the pigeonhole. If you go out, you take out your key because you need it to come back later on, and with this move, you switched off all the electricity. <coughs> Everybody is using that electricity uh, meter. It has some uh, funny aspects. You know, I don't want to deal with, uh, with that now. Later on. So, electric saving device. If, and this is our point, if the bellboy is well trained, Knowing his duty to explain and sell 
familiarization with the hotel, you know. Do you know how the electricity works? Yes, I know, I have been so, so, I'm a frequent traveler. Then leave it. Okay, we don't go further. But may I show you, you know what, there's no need, I have been here. Again, no need to go further. But if the guest says, well, why, is anything special with your electricity now? Then you explain the, how the electricity can be switched on and off in the room, even mentioning nowadays, ladies and gentlemen, this is an environmental protection measure. It sounds, not only sounds good, it's important. But in the meantime, it certainly sounds good. And clients, with awareness, number is growing and growing. You know, they are appreciating that this hotel is taking care of the environment in many ways. One of them is saving electricity, water and so on. So clients, it is very interesting, appreciating, and I have the experience that international clientele is helping us even giving new ideas, probably not known in that hotel, to the management. Okay? So we were talking about hotels treat their customers as guests. So let me ask you uh, the usual thing. When you are waiting for Sunday lunch for some very good friends of you, your family, what are you doing? before as a preparation. Pardon me? Wash your hands. They wouldn't hurt. They wouldn't hurt. Hi, Jenny, I like that. Yes? Waiting for, the, for, for you, important friends, family friends, what preparation would the family do? Clean the house. That's one of the first things. Thank you very much. You know that I'm very picky on cleaning. And... What else? Set the table. Who is going to do the shopping? Shopping before. So shopping before. Okay. Shopping before. What do you buy? Let me ask you. What food stuff? Drinks? What do you buy? What daddy likes or what? That's exactly. That's the key word. What, what is preferred by my guest? In our case, what is preferred by our customers. Guests, we use deliberately the same name. So that's all part of the preparation. Take care of the hygiene, clean the house. Yes, we do that. Even though we keep a certain cleanness usually at home, but when we are waiting for valued guests, in our case, valued customers, so in a way, even more than that, because they are paying for the services. You know, then we clean, we go to shop, we prepare. As you very well said, that we buy the drinks. They love, not grandfather, you know. We buy the food. They like. We prepare. It's not again grandmother, you know. That's another day, okay? So we prepare. And that's exactly what we have to do and have in mind always when we are waiting customers guests to a hotel, to a restaurant, to the hospitality institution. That's exactly. If you don't forget that, you know, then you are on the right track. Okay. I mentioned that last week, but I would like to mention that again. That in every hotel, our goal, our aim is to satisfy the customer. You know? I would say that this is the base. I go further than that, I would say that to exceed the expectation of the customer and the guest. But that's how we can create returning clients. That's how we can win them back. Not the sales and marketing. They can get customers once to the hotel. But to keep them, that highly depends on us, on the operation. If we are unable to provide good memories, which is all that together, they won't come back. Because the competition is fierce and everybody is looking for others' mistake. Okay? Now, we have a so-called first rule. Who knows the first rule in the service industry, which is much wider than the hospitality or the accommodation industry? 
who who can yes please thank you very much the guest is always right like that you know what happens when that is not right then automatically the first rule applies that's it exactly the same with the hotel with the with the service industry the guest is the king because we are living on his or her standing the guest is always right Unfortunately, we in Hungary, in the service industry, we have a different experience. You know, but you, I hope, I'm sure you will be able to travel and stay at international places, experience for yourself that there, they really mean it. That the guest, the customer, is the king, serving you accordingly. What is the ultimate challenge Ladies and gentlemen, for an in industry professional, what is a real challenge for an industry professional? Okay, we don't need a new definition. We were talking about that. To provide a level of guest service that meets the ever-changing need of their guest expectation, even doing more than that. So we are talking about front office employees, some of them, the importance of the first impression, ladies and gentlemen, the service what we are delivering, mentioning some points. Important to remember that everybody in the hotel is a salesperson, not only the front of the house, but front of the house people, they have more possibilities to create the atmosphere and make the guest return. But even the back of the house workers, who could mention some of what we call in the industry back of the house jobs or workers? Hmm? Maintenance, thank you very much. Typically, maintenance, that's a good example. Maintenance, back of the house. They don't have, one sec, they don't have direct communication. They don't have to. They don't have to. No? Yes? Beg pardon? Financial, financial. That's excellent. Financial accounting, these people, administration, they don't have a direct contact. We consider them accounting, financial, back of the house stuff. Even the head of the department. So important to know that. Even the head of the maintenance department is a back of the house person. I deliberately pointed out because some people making a mistake considering management back of the house, which is obviously wrong. Management, supervisors, they are very much front of the house. They are representing, first of all, to the guest, the hotel. Okay, so they have daily contact with the guest. They have to be there at the disposal of the client whenever there is needed by the client or requested. Even if it's not requested, but when they see the opportunity to help, they have to be there at the disposal of the client. Okay, I say it again in Hungarian, render kezésre kell állni. You know, because that's extremely important. Okay, so what do, what can you mention at the moment as back of the house? We had accounting, we had maintenance, human resource, typical, thank you very much, again, back of the house operation. Security, ladies and gentlemen, which is an important operation, security department, asset protection, this is a back of the house operation as well. An important department, you know, nowadays clients all over the world are much more concerned about security issues. So the important to have a safe and secure environment in the hotel as safe and as secure as the whole country, you know, or more, that would be nice and this is very important as well. I'm saying that deliberately because imagine how can you create a safe and secure environment in a hotel in Baghdad, for example. Okay? It is difficult to create more secure and safe environment the whole country at the moment. But 
I'm talking about not war zones. So, front of the house people typically, let me ask you again, at, right now we finish with back of the house, front of the house people, creating the first expression, having daily, frequent, regular guest contact, who are they? Front office people, I would say, stop here for a moment, because you probably know by now that reservation is part of the front office. But reservation is behind this door. I'm in the front, you know, working with my clients, but the reservation is behind here. Although their work is extremely important, as I said, doing the preparation right, you know, they are back of the house people. Reservation is not there to have direct personal contact with the coordinator, with, with the client. Okay? So, front office, we can divide front of the desk people, desk agents, standing outside, bellboys, doorman, some others. They have daily re re regular guest contacts, front of the house, but reservation inside the front office operation, back of the house. Now, what do you think about switchboard? <coughs> switchboard, as you might know, part of the front office as well. Guest relation, this is obvious, part of the front office, but guest relation must have otherwise couldn't exist, must have daily contact with the guest. Okay? So, switchboard, not necessarily, switchboard is not necessarily front of the house. Switchboard can be placed, you know, inside the building, behind bars, like we do, you know, not necessarily having direct guest contact. By phone, yes. You know, but personal guest contact, no. Meet the guest, okay? Now, uh, uh, what is the attraction of the hospitality industry for you? Let me have a couple of opinions. As future staff members, career in the hotel and catering industry, or tourism, which is in wider sense, what, I what are the attractions for you? Driving forces, I would like to know. What are the attractions of the hospitality industry? A simple question, with your own words. Why do you find attractive the hospitality? Why do you find it interesting? Personal contact, to have personal contact with different people. That's one of the main reasons we are going there. So if you are a type of a person working in an office, too shy, then definitely hospitality industry is not for you. One of the attractions of hospitality industry is to have the possibility to meet, learn other people. It is very interesting. If you have the necessary ears, you must have. You know. Not only pretending. Okay, and what you said, the attractions, yes, that's very true. It is elegant. I'm working in an air conditioned environment with nice people, you know. I'm working with intelligent, yeah, don't be afraid, tell them. I'm working with intelligent people. That's an advantage, you know. That's a, intelligent people would like to work with intelligent people. This is obvious. Okay? Stupid idiots, you have the time, all your life, you know, to find them. But in your workplace, you would like to have nice, intelligent colleagues. Yes, yes. this is extremely good. I, I believe he is touching again a crucial point. You know, a certain type. You don't have to be a priest. But if you enjoy creating happy faces around you, then definitely hospitality industry is for you. There are rare occasions in life when you can create happiness because of your nice behavior, because of your attitude, because of your approach. Hospitality industry is definitely one of them. Creating happiness, satisfaction around you. If you enjoy that, a 
again, certain type of people, you know, gives you pleasure, gives you joy, you know, then definitely you will find your personal fulfillment, you could find your personal fulfillment in the hospitality industry. You know, who knows the saying, ladies and gentlemen, listen carefully, you are much younger. In every job what must be done, there is an element of fun. In every job what must be done, there is an element of fun. Mary Poppins. Don't you love maybe Mary Poppins? Okay, so here, in your job, you have to find, in your job, the element of fun, the enjoyment, the personal fulfillment. So I think, you know, these are what you mentioned, the attractions of the hospitality industry. And I, I would like to mention a third one, travel. Because internationally speaking, the hospitality industry on higher level, when you go up on the rank, making your, building your career in the industry, you will see the international industry. May I ask you, please, everybody to stop the private conversation. It's disturbing. Okay? So with the international hotel industry, you have the possibility, you know, very much so, to travel. Two, three years, for example, a food and beverage manager at one part of the world in a different continent, not only country, then for two, three years, they will transfer you to another job, usually a higher job. You go ahead on the ranks, building your career, and being probably the assistant, executive assistant to the general manager in another country, in a different country again. So the international hotel industry is not a job what happened in Hungary because of our closeliness, you know, that you start as a young person there and you retire from the same small hotel. That's not the international hotel industry is all about. This is about travel, this is about new countries, new experience. That makes, again, the industry very attractive. So one of the architecture design the special, nice, beautiful furnishings, I would like to mention. Uh, and to create this ambience, this, this pleasant ambience, that's the contribution, first of all, of the staff. If you look around you, only the hotels you have seen from outside. Mr. Hardy Pai, thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. So, when you look around you, you will see these beautiful new hotels in only in Budapest as well. So what do you think? What makes the difference? The furniture, the design, the location of the hotel, the equipment of the hotel? No. They are all compete to each other. You know, when Intercontinental, in Budapest was introducing a couple of years ago, direct internet, you know, uh, speed, speedy internet into every room, immediately, higher at the time, for the same year, you know, we were doing the same. Because otherwise you are losing with the competition. You know? So every hotel, if somebody is introducing a new technical equipment, a new facility, immediately will be introduced by the competition on the same level, even lower. Okay? So I want to point out that not the technical equipment, in this case, when they all have very similar location in the capital of a country, you know, in the, close to the downtown or in the downtown, what makes the difference? Then, it's not the location, not the technical facilities, not even the offers, what they are offering, Thai restaurants, or Russian or whatever. What makes the difference? People make the difference. Thank you very much. People, yes. We call them, you know, nicely associates. Associates, not all staff members, associates we call them. People make the difference. That's exactly it. Because facilities will be very similar all over the location. Technical equipment will be very similar all around the location. But people make the difference. That's it. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. So, hotels play, you know that very well, ladies and gentlemen, 
an important role in the community. So I had the pleasure, for example, as interesting clients, new faces, to greet in my life many famous people. Many. That's interesting as well. To see them, you know, otherwise uh, most of the, of the local people would see them only on TV, probably. So when you have the chance to be there, you know, experience the presidential visit, you know, whatever was, you know, or I personally met, for example, the Dalai Lama, and he, he was very nice. I still remember that. I will never forget that. Was, his behavior was so nice. It created an impression, you know, astonishing impression all around him. But many, many, uh, these famous people visiting the hotels, and they are meeting, organizing meeting, Congress and other events in hotels as well. That's one of the attractions of the industry. I still hear some, can hear some private conversation. So the hospitality industry, as you know very well, again, I would like to ask please everybody, I mean that, to stop the private conversation. The hospitality industry is part of a much larger enterprise, which is the travel and the tourism enterprise, ladies and gentlemen. Now we have to define the term hotel. We were talking about last time, and Alexander said that uh, something to provide accommodation, which is certainly very good. This is a, 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 one of the right answers to provide accommodation. That's a hotel. That's the hotel industry, the accommodation industry is all about. I wouldn't say overnight in English, overnight accommodation, because I would like to mention that again, overnight accommodation, we mean that for one night. An overnight stay, if you go, I would have an overnight stay, then they give you a room for one night, you know, in an English-speaking country. Then the other thing is that you are not hiring, I mentioned that last week, a room necessarily for 24 hours. You might hire a room for a couple of hours during the day as well. That's business as well for the hotel. That's business as well, put it that way. Alexander, you are laughing, you know, marketing malabans, but that's not the case. Airport hotels, airport hotels, think about, you know, the staff, the crew is coming in the morning, they have their room till 6 in the evening, and they are not staying overnight as well. And if you are clever, doing a right business, then you send the cleaners after 6 p.m. to clean the room again, and selling the same room again for the night. Those creating not 100% occupancy, but in, very, in many cases, well over 150% occupancy. So when you hear that for the first time, you say that's impossible to have 150% occupancy. Yes, it is possible. Specialty of the airport hotels, where the stays are shorter, and you can sell the room twice in one day. Okay, so first, regarding classification, ladies and gentlemen, and make sure that everybody has a copy of the first week as well, because that's all written down. We are uh, classificating internationally, not locally, but internationally, hotels regarding, ladies and gentlemen, five. First. Second. Target. The third, who, who is going to help me? What is the third? Yeah, thank you very much. We call it level or level of services. What is the first one? So we have now classification by size to understand it shortly. It is hard or impossible to compare an elephant with a mouse. Okay? They are mammals, so they are comparable, but that would, wouldn't be the right thing. Okay? So size is matters. Then, 
second target market. Okay? Are we dealing with business people, you know, in this case, or are we dealing with holiday makers in a resort? <laughs> Obviously, again, difficult. You can compare, but difficult. There is no reason to do so. So we should compare similar hotels if we would like to see the differences economically and uh, financially. Then the third one, level of services. We mean quality in a way, obviously. You know, a one-star hotel can be very profitable as well, you know, but it wouldn't be fair, wouldn't be correct to compare that with a five-star hotel, okay, according. And then what's the first one? Anybody? We are, so this, the first one is ownership and affiliation. Ownership and affiliation. Now, very quickly, we divine, first of all, let's talk about hotel size. About hotel size. So we divide, again, according to the English and American books, on the field, on the field, please, on the field, under 100 rooms, so we are not dealing at all, like some of the st local statistics, we are not talking about beds, because that's stupid. We are talking about rooms. We are not renting beds. That's in the Munkastalo. You know, we are renting rooms. Okay, so under 150, that's one category. Between, if you want, you can write it down. But again, this exactly you will have or receiving my email or receive some of them. Between 150 and 300, that's the next category. The majority of the city hotels is this. Then new trend building much higher hotels bigger hotels between 300 and 600 rooms and the last, the fourth category regarding size is over 600, is over 600. I had the experience to stay in a hotel where they had 4,000 rooms. Imagine the pleasure. It was unbelievable, you know. Do we have the young Russian lady? present today? No. So I can tell you that was in Moscow. The hotel was the biggest in his time in 72. The hotel was here with 7,000 rooms. You know why? Because Americans were building earlier a hotel with 1,000 rooms. And the Russians said, we will show them. If they have 1,000 rooms the hotel, at least we will have 4,000. Okay, and they did it. No, I don't want to speak about the quality. Not now. Okay? The second, how we classified hotels, ladies and gentlemen, the second is the target market. Now, let's go through quickly the target markets, what we have. So, I mentioned already, am I asking too much to stop the private conversation, young lady? Am I? Thank you very much. So, first of all, we deal with commercial hotels. Commercial hotels regarding target market. What is the target here, ladies and gentlemen? Who is the target? Commercial hotels. Everybody. You are right. Everybody in a way. But first of all, I would say commercial hotels are really dealing with business clients, business people, business travelers. Typically, a downtown business, you know, reachable, easily, these are the categories, and typically short stays. Commercial hotels, we don't have families obviously staying for weeks. You know, typically we have business travelers doing their business, running after their business, even probably sleeping, in the, in the room only and 
going home. The next one, what we have, still hotel target market, airport hotels. Airport hotels dealing with overnight stay. And here comes the word. With overnight stay, a layover of cancelled flight. Who can explain to us what does it mean, layover of cancelled flight? In our case. In the industry, layover. Yes? Yes, the air, the flight being cancelled, she says, so the airline is paying for the accommodation somewhere, possibly a hotel near to the airport, because that's comfortable for the guest, for the client as well, and reducing cost for the airline. Okay, they usually have airlines an agreement, an agreement with these hotels to have the accommodation on a short notice because that's important that this category is to have accommodation available on short notice, very short stays, very short stays, you know, for people, layovers, uh, flight being cancelled for whatever reason, and they have to stay one night usually in that city, okay? What is typical for airline hotels? What else? So we were talking about Layover, remember the word, because all over the world, in the industry, in the tourism as well, layover, we call people only for one night and layover from a plane. That's the expression. So who else is staying in an airport hotel, typically? Mm. Yeah, the crew members. Thank you. The crew members. Exactly. Crew members are staying there because, again, it's comfortable for the airline, comfortable for the pilots and the stewardesses, and comfortable for the company as well. So this is the reason. In many places around the world, in Paris, where they have huge airports, there are lovely dozens of airport hotels, even a Sofitel, a five-star category. So don't think about uh, economy class hotels at these places near the airport. You know, if the ceiling is well done, you know, not crashing like in Paris, you know, the ceiling near the airport or in other places, you know, then the insulation, cigatelation, the insulation nowadays can protect these hotels from the noise, which is the biggest danger, Alexander Darling. I didn't do that. That was not nice. So, typically in airport hotels, we have crews as well. The third category is, do you want to ask something? Do you want to ask? Yes. Then would you be so kind, may I ask you personally yes. to stop the private conversation? Thank you. Just for a couple of hours, if it's possible. I have the same problem with my wife and my daughter, you know, but then I am not holding a lecture, you know, so that's a different thing. I do understand the difficulties. The third, concerning target market. So, huge hotels, apartment hotels. What are they typical for? Apartment hotels or huge hotels? Some good ideas. Please. Long stay, typically for long stay, that's fine. Typically for families, you know, they usually have the furniture, the design is different in these cases. Usually for longer stays, they have a kitchenette, they have more facilities in the room. Less public space, I would put it that way, and more space for the rooms, for the apartments, for guest services. In, in many places, in Anglo-Saxon countries, or English-speaking South countries, they call that uh, penthouses. Penthouses. That's another word, but that means a very similar, larger accommodation for longer stay. Then we have another category regarding still target market, the residential hotels. Residential hotels, not well known probably in Hungary, but again, I would say longer stays, in the, in the United States, for example, a residential hotel, 
no, they call a hotel or accommodation where retired people live for years before they uh, say goodbye forever. You know, so they live there long time, but they are providing the services of a good hotel. It's not cheap, it's a very good, attractive business as well. Imagine the Hungarian retired people living in four-star retirement home or residential hotels. I would love to wait for the time to come. Resort hotel. Resort hotels. This is a gentleman again regarding target market. The big difference, this is a planned destination. So you go well ahead with your family planning a trip, planning a vacation, a holiday somewhere. <coughs> you decide about the location and you look after probably the hotel only after that. Okay? Decide later. What is typical at these resort hotels regarding still facilities? Uh, all inclusive, that can be. That can easily be. Offering all inclusive, Thai massage, everything. Yeah? What else comes into your mind? Resort hotel. How can you think about, think about, how can you differentiate? Typical for business hotel, commercial hotels, you know, we know that. Airport hotels are dealing with different type of clientele. Resort hotels, again, dealing a different type of clientele, yes? Usually, exactly. Length of stay, again, in these cases, is usually longer. Because usually, that's one thing. This is all about international statistics. Alex, I can count on you, I believe. Over there, Pekete Alex, no? Thanks. Uh, plan destination, vacation, vacation, okay? Sport activities, that's very important. How do we call that when a place, a resort hotel, is providing huge sport facilities? Huh? Who are the people helping you there? Do you know the word? Animators, animators, that's exactly. That's an interesting job. May I call your attention? Some of you, you know, who is doing sport seriously, it is a very well paid job and everywhere in the Mediterranean nearby, everywhere they are looking for people you who know, teaching tennis, teaching other sports to the client with good communication skills and with a good friendly approach and attitude. So long as they Sport activities, fitness, swimming, all these obviously are there. <coughs> Mr. Heya, thank you very much. Vacation, group activities organized, group activities organized, golf, dancing parties, for example, you know, to entertain the, for the clients for the longer stay, all these. And conference destinations as well. Interestingly, in the Mediterranean, and many North African nations, nations in Africa, having a seaside. And I, know, I don't know if you heard about that or not. They are building extreme, beautiful conference and resort facilities. Extreme, I said. Extremely elegant, very well priced, reachable from all over Europe with cheap charter flights. No. Ask the Scandinavian people where they are going to spend their holiday. They are all going to the Mediterranean, or many of them. So I had a personal experience, for example, in Spain, you know, that from Scandinavia, hundreds of thousands having their own flat, huge apartments at the seaside. You know, not going back to hotels to Spain, but they are going back to the same plot, uh, space they love, having their own flat. Okay? So, resort hotel, then we have a huge category, the bed and breakfast, bed and breakfast facilities, very well known, you are young, I'm sure you love it, so do I. Then you have the accommodation practically, not full services as you said, but breakfast is included, some breakfast which is important, very well priced, very well priced, 
I remind everybody again, don't use the word cheap. No, because that's wrong. Very well priced, okay, and uh, very popular. Then we have the timeshare facilities. Again, an expanding hotel segment. But I am not going to deal with that in detail. Okay? Then we have casino hotels, ladies and gentlemen. Think about Las Vegas. Think about Las Vegas. What comes into your mind? Yeah? One of my friends has... Gambling. Gambling. That's exactly. So, the priority of the place there is not to generate revenue on the hotel business. Remember that. The priority to let the clients lose their offshore no drug, everything. You know? So that's the priority of the hotel. Okay? A good example to you, you know, not knowing the word, I hope you won't, that well, the gambling, but we, because we had a casino in a hotel, I have been working. A huge casino, probably best in the town. Imagine when a casino is paying for the guest the flight ticket to come over from overseas, paying the total price back and forth, a return ticket, paying the accommodation for a couple of days, for three days, even for a week, free of charge for the class, paying the meal, all the food and drink, except alcoholic beverages, what he or she consumes in the hotel in Budapest. So flight, accommodation, with full board, we call it. Okay? Being paid by the casino. You only have to gamble. You have to gamble. So you have to buy jetons, jet Chetons for $1,000, something like that, you know. And you are going there, obviously, with the hope that you are going to double or triple and so on your money, you know. Imagine the situation. I don't want to analyze that now. Imagine the situation where the casino allowed, and not only one, they are doing that. Organize these groups, paying for everything. Make sure that you lose at least $1,000 a week. Okay, because that's the deal, practically. Okay, that's, you know, the primary uh, gamblers. Uh, and the hotel function is to support the casino. Again, not the hotel is generating revenue. You know, that's why I brought up this example, because free of charge room and free of charge meal wouldn't generate revenue. Okay, so we all have the same conclusion, same understanding. Conference centers, priority given to meetings at the conference centers, technical equipment available there is very important. If you are dealing with international conferences, obviously language skills are even more important than the skills of the staff. Okay? And we have in Europe a very fierce competition, you know, as I mentioned, huge resorts with huge and very good conference facilities being built around the Mediterranean, especially in East African countries. So in Tunisia, in Morocco, for example, in Algeria, you all have fantastic conference facilities. And even further, some African nations, seems to be a longer flight, but the expenses the costs are down, so still a good business. Now, I would like to mention a target market, ladies and gentlemen, another one, alternative lodging properties. Alternative lodging properties. What do you think about that? Alternative lodging properties. Who can mention, so we are talking about some? Tim Afray, sorry, sorry. That's very good. Alternative lodging property, no? Caravan. Caravan camping. Thank you very much. Again, you are on the point. Camping places are among the uh, other possibilities. And mobile homes, this type of thing, campgrounds, 
and even both, ladies and gentlemen. That's a lucrative business, a very big business. I'm sure you heard about that. So you can stay on these boats for weeks, traveling, but they are working as a hotel. I'm sure some of you will experience that, and that, that, that's a good money for the staff as well. Okay, so from your point of view. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go quickly to the list of services, level of services. What makes the difference here? We are talking about, we are talking about same location, but different services provided. So, same location, but different services. One, two, three, four, five, and so on, stars. Okay? So, service level, ladies and gentlemen, is, and listen very carefully now, is a measurable bene of measure of benefits provided to the guest. Service level is a measure, that means a measure of benefits provided to the guest. So once we are saying it's a three-star hotel, it's a five-star international hotel, we have, you two, a pretty good idea about the service level of that hotel, that accommodation service. Okay? We won't know exactly, because hotels are different. You know, in different countries, maybe the service is different as well. As I love to mention, you know, that in Pago Pago, Pasta Hotel means different things like in Ulaanbaatar, you know. So even though probably the name of the brand is the same, they have five or eight stars outside at the front of the hotel. But the service level probably is not even comparable, okay. So it has something to do with the local culture, with the local possibilities as well. But still we differentiate, you know, still according to the service level. Some services, ladies and gentlemen, are not physical things, and you know that very well. Rather, actions and performances by the staff, by the management, and efforts, what we need, what we do. So some services are not physical, things, but actions, performances, efforts by the management, by the staff. And this is highly depending on the local culture, culture as well. Okay, so they are not comparable. For somebody says, how do you decide at the moment in Hungary how many staff we have? I would say the hotel, you know, to a certain level. In the early 90s, one of the governments in Hungary, after the free election, obviously, you know, one uh, government wanted to rise the tax on a five on the five star category. You know, decided to rise, make some money. You know, we don't have enough money to share with the friends, so we have to make some more money and rise. That's a pretty good idea. We don't hurt the poor. We don't hurt the people already in rent, you know, but we take away, as Robin Hood, from the rich. Okay, so put another tax on a five-star hotels. What happened after that? What do you think? <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, wait a second, that's a lovely story, yeah? He says, you know, the service level dropped. Why should it? No? Wait a second, wait a second. First of all, speak up, because everybody would love to hear you. That's one thing. Now, really, yes. One second. She said the service level dropped. So, I'm a five star. I'm managing a five star property. You know, I have to pay more tax, because that was. I pay more tax, but I don't want to drop the service level, because then I'm losing the customers. I won't do that. Yeah, I would let it run, you know. That's a headache for the owners, not for the general manager. Don't forget that. For the owners. They are different. One second. Let's see somebody else. What happened in Hungary when the government wanted to rise the taxation in the five-star category? Yeah. 
sat, interestingly, people were cutting down one star from the table. And they said, from now on, certainly keeping the level of services, keeping the clientele, the guests, they are four stars. That's it. So, with this example, which is a real one, obviously, I wanted to show you not only the reaction of the local hotel industry, not only stupid people working in the industry as well, you know, but I wanted to show you how is being measured, how is being measured here, okay? Because I said that quality level is a measurement, okay? So five-star hotel, theoretically, or you think so, should be better than a four-star, isn't it? Five-star hotel should be better than a four-star. So, not necessarily so in Hungary. This is my message. Okay, let's finish here and see you in ten minutes. Oh, I'm making it very Maga a csupan, ugye jól emlékszem? Hát igen, akkor jó. 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 Hát igen, akkor jó.